crossed out in the countryside. But uh, perhaps you notice the sheep wandering around across the fields. There's a place in the Bible where the people of God recognize that they're rather like sheep. Sheep aren't very bright, are they? Sheep go around, they're a bit, a bit dim, aren't they? <laughs> they go, ba ba ba. They've only got one word in their language. And uh, the people in, in, in the Old Testament times um, one day recognized that they were really all rather like sheep, but sheep who'd gone astray, sheep who, who'd kind of lost where they were supposed to be feeding, wondered whether they had a shepherd, and they were just kind of wandering all over the place. And the people of God realized that they were all astray, rather like a schoolroom where the teacher's gone out and the children just do whatever they want. They just go run riot, yeah? And there's another place in the Bible around about the same time when it says that the people, all the people, are actually like grass. Sheep eat grass, don't they? And the people of God realize we're, we're actually just grass. We wither and we die. And then that's the end of us. That was at the time uh, when Isaiah was writing. And the people started to ask themselves, well, if we're all like sheep, yeah, who've gone astray, and we're all like grass that just withers and dies, then we're in a pretty bad predicament, aren't we? We need somebody to come and save us. And they remembered how one of their kings, the most famous one, if you like, King David, had written a song to God. And he'd, he'd grown up, King David, he'd grown up as a shepherd boy in the fields. His dad was Jesse, and he used to look after the, the fields. So he knew all about sheep, and he knew all about grass. And in this song that he wrote, he, he said that the Lord, God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, is my shepherd, and he looks after me, and he stops me going astray. Now, I brought this from over from home. Actually, I'm really not supposed to hold this. Only the bishop, who's coming on in November here, only he's allowed to have one of these staffs. But I'm just taking it today because, you see, David says in his in his song, in his psalm, you all know it, Psalm 23. We're going to sing it a bit later. Um, David said that uh, your rod, God, your rod and your staff comfort me. They keep me in check. So if I go astray, then this is what I, God does to me. Who can, who's going to, you know what's coming now, don't you? Who's going to be up for this? I wonder, who's this scallywag over here? So if he go, runs astray, then God comes like this and he pulls him like that and he rescues him. If, if somebody else falls into the pit and needs rescuing, yeah, then along comes God, who's the shepherd, and he just pulls you out of the pit so that you come back into the fold. That's Psalm 23. Your rod and your staff comfort me. They keep me in check, keep me in place. Now, the Jewish people... All those centuries ago, about 2,500 years ago, right, they started to wonder whether they would ever, ever actually see their shepherd. And they started to think, well, maybe one day God, who we can't see, and we're not even allowed to see, one day maybe God will send us a shepherd to earth. So they waited and waited and waited. They started praying, Lord, God, creator of the heaven and earth. We want more of you. We need more of you because we're like grass that withers and dies. And we're like sheep that have all gone astray. So we need more help, God. Come to our rescue. And they waited and they prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And many, many years later, a guy who came from a poor place in the country of the Jews. Very 
humble man from humble background who hadn't had any special training or schooling, he said to his friends, I'm the good shepherd. I'm the good shepherd. I'm the one who you've been waiting for. I'm the good shepherd who's come. My father sent me to look after you and to guide you. And all of a sudden, as this man started to do his work as the good shepherd, people notice now that they could smell him and see him and touch him and hear his teaching. And they came to realize bit by bit that this really was a very good shepherd. What was his name? Jesus was his name. His name was Jesus. When the angel had appeared to his mother, Mary, before he was born, she said, Mary, you're going to have a baby. and His name is going to be Jesus. And Jesus means Savior, Savior of the world. So, this was Jesus saying to his people, I'm the good shepherd. Why did he say, I'm the good shepherd? Why didn't he just say, I'm, I'm the sh a shepherd, I'm just another shepherd? Why did he say, I'm the good shepherd? Well, the Bible tells us that uh, the good shepherd, the really good shepherd, the expert shepherd, knows the name of all his sheep. Every single name. He's already got it in his heart. So, Peter, he knows your name. Donna, he knows your name. Where have they gone? <laughs> Cairo, somewhere around. Is he upstairs? Cairo's name is written on God's heart. And Shay's name is already written on God's heart. So, the good shepherd knows the names of the sheep. And the sheep, when they hear the voice of the good shepherd, they recognize this is a really good shepherd. This is a shepherd I can trust. This <coughs> is the voice of God himself speaking to me. And Jesus said that the good shepherd is the kind of shepherd who will stay with his flock and his sheep, looking after them, whatever happens. So if a wolf comes along and tries to steal some of the sheep and eat some of the sheep, then this shepherd will stay with his sheep, whatever happens. He will not abandon them. And he says that the good shepherd, the really good shepherd, is willing to therefore lay down his life for the sheep. Because maybe the pack of wolves will come and try and eat all the sheep. And in, in doing so, they'll eat the good shepherd. But Jesus says, I am the good shepherd and I lay down my life for the sheep. And there's one more bit that's really exciting. I love this bit. Jesus said that he, as the good shepherd, has other sheep from other folds who are going to come in to the flock. And that's what's happening actually this morning in our service. Other sheep from other flocks are joining and Jesus sums it all up by saying there will be one flock, just one flock, and one shepherd, one good shepherd. That's the good news for this morning. We'll come back to that in a minute. Would you like to stand as we sing again? That you have to make. Huh? What are you thinking of? What, what decision, what's the, this decision you have to make? Another decision. Not everybody chooses to get married. But everybody has to make this decision, whether they know it or not. I'm going to tell you the answer. They have to decide what or who they are following. Yeah? Because you, you may not realize it, but actually we're all following something or somebody all the time. Yeah? Yeah? So this is quite a big decision, and you want to get it right, don't you? And actually, what we're doing this morning with the baptisms, the four people who are being baptized, they have made the most important decision that they will ever make in their lives.
because they're deciding who they're going to follow. Not just for a day, a Sunday, so that mum can be happy or whatever, children can be pleased. But they're making a decision about who they're going to follow until they die. Yeah? This is a big decision. Now, I wonder who, who's made... I'm going to bring you back my staff, because not all of you saw it, because some of you are upstairs. But this is the staff that King David talked about when he said to his God, you're my shepherd, yeah? And um, you have a rod and a staff, and with this rod and this staff, you keep me on the straight and narrow, because uh, I want to follow you all the days of my life, yeah? So we went like this. If somebody falls into a pit and we come and rescue him and pull him out of the pit, and somebody goes a bit naughty and off stray, then we pull him back on the straight and narrow, back into the fold. Now, this all sounds like a fun kind of thing, just a vicar being messing around with a bit of wood. But this is actually quite serious. So before I can press on and we move into the baptisms, I want to ask if there's anyone here this morning who made the decision in their life to follow Jesus rather than what they had been following or who they had been following before. Do you see? Is there somebody who made this decision who'd like just to come up briefly and say what it was that they left behind and what it is they're now following? Is there somebody, perhaps, who might like to do that? Thank you, Jimmy. I suppose you heard me before, but the truth is that when I was a younger man, I was a very violent guy. I was a boxer, and there wasn't many people came up against me. I was a top cookie. I'd done things that wasn't right, but one day the Lord came into my life. He touched me, 1968, on the 10th of October at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I was totally hit by the Holy Spirit. And he came into my life, and from that day on, I made a decision that I would follow Jesus for the rest of my life. And as you know, wherever God, the Lord asks me to go, I will go. As you know, I'm going to Sierra Leone. There's a place up Ebola. doesn't worry me because the Lord has asked me to go. So to me, and I want to encourage you guys to please follow Jesus. Encourage these children to follow Jesus today. Follow them. Be there for them all the time. Be there for one another to follow Jesus at these hard times. In Jesus' name I ask. Thank you very much, everyone. We need to put a bit of flesh and bones on this. Otherwise, it's just, you know, a bit light-hearted. But can you tell us, can you tell us the kind of things you did in your first life before you started to, <laughs> to what, you know, I'm going to get out of the way now. You don't have to show me, but what did you do? Uh, my first time I was involved with people like the craze. Um, I was involved with people, I was a minder for guys in London who were involved with the IRA. I was involved with guys who used to use shooters. I was involved with people, I was a doorman, and people on the door would have come in. I wouldn't have minded giving you the best hide in ever you got. I didn't have anything in my heart. I didn't have remorse. I didn't have anything. But I would have uh, taken you out. I was into all sorts of skullduggery, like um, guys selling off machines, stolen machines, and uh, they would sell them off. And then I would be asked to go with a load loader and pick these machines off, steal them back again, so that they, they would sell them on again to different people. This is the type of stuff that I was involved in. And people was, it was almost like you were into uh, all the dark places that you were led into. It was total darkness, evil, evil, evil stuff. So, yeah, Martin, it's, it's about, I could go on and on. I don't want, want to elaborate no, no, on the that's darkness, okay. but no. on the light of Jesus, yeah. what it does for you. When you come into the light of Christ, things change in your life, things that you see is wrong. You want to stand up and be counted for Jesus. You want to stand up and say, this is wrong. This is not right. When you see your brothers being put into a place on your sisters, uh, young ladies maybe, I see it all the time, put them into prostitution, being used and abused, say, no, this is not right. 
Say no to it. Jesus, this is not right. Be that person. Be accountable to God. Mm. Be accountable to each other. Mm. Thank you, Jimmy. That really puts some flesh and bones on it. Right. Okay. So we're not just messing around with this. This is real life stuff, okay? Now, I said to, to Cairo, and I said to Shay yesterday, when we were having a little talk about baptism here in the church, I said to them that when you grow up, right, you could make decisions to do very bad things if you wanted to do it, yeah? Yeah? But now, today, you're going to make a decision to follow Jesus, right? And you've made a decision, making a decision to follow him and start to... Um, I, I, it sounds terrible to say, be a good boy. <laughs> it sounds so kind of old-fashioned and corny. But it's actually what I mean. Because you're, we, what we talked about is, what does it mean for young boys like you who go to school to, to follow Jesus? What does it actually mean? Well, it means when you go to school and the teacher tells you to stop talking, you stop talking. You see? Because to obey the teacher is actually to obey God. Because God gave the teacher her job. Yeah? And if, if mum says to you, Shay... Um, just come and sit down and be good and eat your dinner now, right? And you go, I don't want to do that, right? See? Then you're not obeying your mum, right? And your dad. And therefore, you're disobeying God. So it starts in little small ways. And when I was a little boy, your kind of age, I was the younger one. I was Martin. And my older brother was Stephen. And we used to fight together. And one day, my dad said to me, if you carry on like that, you will start a third world war. He did. And we thought, Dad's got his helmet in the shed. He knows what world wars are about. He was in one. Oh, we better stop fighting. Do you see? I don't know if you fight. But it starts in small ways, and as Jimmy showed us, it can end up in terrible big ways. So, you're making a decision. It's like you're going down a road and you come to a crossroads, yeah? You can either go that way or you can go that way. It really is as simple as that. Every moment of the day you decide, it's rather nice to go down this way and tell this lie or steal this thing or swear or not do what I'm supposed to do. It's attractive and tempting, yeah? Yeah? And it's actually rather difficult to go the other way. And Jesus says the other way is straight and it is narrow. But it's the way that leads to life. It gets more difficult, actually, as you get older, believe it or not. Jimmy shared with us last Sunday, he touched on it now, that following Jesus for him may mean going back to Sierra Leone, where thousands of people are dying of the Ebola virus. It could even mean that. It's a straight and narrow road. But here's the really important bit. This is the road that you are taking today, the four of you, that leads to life. Mm -hmm. So let's stand. Let's sing, I've decided to follow Jesus. And those